Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Tuesday, July 22nd, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. Today will be the second shortest day of the year, according to scientists, and maybe one of the shortest days ever on Earth. Silver hits a 14-year high today, I hope you're not missing out. And no, folks, there is no increase in flash flooding at all. Uh, but if you cherry pick the data, you might get there. So buckle up, Buttercup, and keep calm. It's boom time. Is flash flooding getting worse? Summer soaking start may hold the answer. An exclusive AccuWeather analysis confirms that 2025 is shaping up to be one of the most flood-impacted summers on record in the U.S. The only problem with this headline is the data is cherry-picked. They go back to 1994. That's where they start the data. Now, how you cherry-pick data is you go back to the beginning of the rise, and that is the beginning of your data set. Because if we look before 1994... Flash floods are even higher. Yeah. And so they go on to explain that this is all due to cow farts and fossil fuels and uh, climate change. But the, but the problem is they cherry pick the data. If you go back to 1900, there is no change in flooding in the U.S. It's a flat line. Um, no increase in flash flooding. But as you go back, the data set gets weaker and weaker. But it's showing the same thing. In fact, flooding on the 10-year average was more frequent in the past than today. Do you see this huge drop down to the 2020s? It's funny how that works, how you can skew the data, well, to get the people reading the headlines to need therapy. The U.S. braces for severe weather across multiple states this week. What you need to know. Well, there is a heat dome in effect. This is a high pressure system that's going to be sitting over the central eastern part of the U.S. uh, with record breaking hot conditions across the southern central U.S. this week with cities like Wichita Falls, Dallas and Kansas City expected to hit 100. But back in 1939, those cities hit 110 or higher. So there is no increase in heat waves either, just an increase in idiots reporting without looking at the data. The environment is primed for severe storms Tuesday and Wednesday in the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. And with 31 confirmed tornadoes, Wisconsin is already well past its average yearly count. So there is an uptick in tornadoes and, well... What better time than now to come over to TornadoHQ.com for the live severe weather map. There's nothing going on in the U.S. Just one severe weather warning, a special marine warning uh, down here in the Gulf. That's it. We do have some thunderstorms happening, but nothing severe. And now the full forecast. Extreme heat overspreads the central and southern U.S., pushing east through midweek. Severe weather and excessive rain for portions of the upper Midwest. Dangerous heat is expected across portions of the central and southeast U.S. through July. Severe storms for parts of the northern plains and the upper Midwest tonight and Wednesday. Threats include a few tornadoes, damaging winds, and excessive rain. Heed the warnings. Click on your county for more information at weather.gov. Heavy rain may impact portions of the southeast and the southwest into tonight. A tropical disturbance brings heavy rain to Guam and the Marianas through Friday. Quick look over at the GFS model and we, we will walk it through for you. Here is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, and then, like we said last night, there's a huge explosion here up in the Great Lakes at the beginning of the week on Monday. We'll keep a close eye on that as it develops, but we're worried about flooding. So let's look at total accumulated precipitation uh, for the model run, 
And you can see where those flash flooding threats will develop here um, on the 25th, Friday this week, and Saturday and Sunday. So this is the weekend, beginning Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We could be seeing some flash flooding in these purple regions. Seismic update. No real quakes of note. Tons of aftershocks in the Camp Chaka. Let's take a look. The biggest quake of the day is that bugger right there, 5.5 in Petroska off the shore here. Um, so we're keeping a close eye on that for you. Overall, low-level activity worldwide. Good news there. Worldwide Volcano News, a huge list today. Raventador first on the list of 15,000 feet. What else do we got here? We've got Liwotolo, 6,000 there. Dukono to 8,000. Sungay to 24,000 feet. Kirishima, 5,000 foot blast. Ibu to 7. Popo, sporadic emissions of volcanic ash. Talika on the list. Volcanic ash not seen. What does that even mean? Well, I haven't seen it either. Santaguito to 14,000. Semadu, who knew? Now you do 15,000 foot blast. Kirishima! 5,000 foot puff there. Raventador to 15,000. Liwotolo to 6,000 feet. Ducono on the list. 8,000 foot blast. Holy macaroni. Sangay. Volcanic ash possible. Fuego to 15,000. Popo. Mm, nothing there. Talika to 5,000. Semaru to 15,000. We've got Kirishima. 6,000 foot blast there. Santiguito. Possible. Legitimate. Steam. Raventador to 15,000. Merapi on the list with a 15,000 foot blast. What do we got here? Okay, let's take a quick look. Liwotolo to 6,000. What a list. Sangay wraps it up with a 20,000 foot blast just moments ago. And that brings us to space weather where the three-day geomagnetic forecast is lighting up, folks. A moderate G2 geomagnetic storm watch is in effect until 6 UTC, July 23rd, thanks to the onset of a coronal hole strain that is now facing Earth. Let's refresh this. We're hitting KP5 now. We're in G1 geomagnetic storm, and I didn't think I hit the refresh. Yes, I did. You can see several stations up there by KP6. No, they're all at KP5. Just one station, at, they're all at KP5. I do digress. So we could have some aurora up there in northern Canada. Get out there. But the forecast is that this will tick up maybe into G2 geomagnetic storm uh, in the next 24 hours. So heed the warnings uh, and get out and experience the aurora. Here is current telemetry. We'll take a look. You can see the BZ has shifted over the last 12 hours. A huge shift in the phi angle. Earth to sun, <clears throat> and we've got plasma density increasing over the last 24 hours, and now plasma speed is increasing, probably hitting about 600 kilometers per second now. This has got to go much higher to get those sky fireworks kicking off. And you folks could see up to 25 shooting stars an hour as the southern Delta Aquarids and the Alpha Capricorn meteor showers peak uh, in just a few days. Two minor meteor showers, the Southern Delta Aquarids and the Alpha Capricornids peak overnight on July 29th through the 30th, making it a great night for stargazing. If you like to look at meteorites, this is a perfect opportunity as the sun will be just about at, uh, uh, the moon will be at half mast during the event. Two meteor showers will peak together on the night of July 29th into the morning of the 30th with the moon out of the way just in time for about 25 shooting stars per hour to be seen in the dark skies. The highlight will be the southern Delta Aquarids, the stronger of the two showers, with expected rates of up to 20 meteors per hour at the shower's peak. Active from July 18th to August 12th, the southern Delta Aquarids are known for their faint lingering trails. So please get out and look up. And July 22nd will be the second shortest day of the year, according to scientists. Yeah, Tuesday, July 22nd, today. 
will be the second shortest day of the year as Earth completes a full rotation in less time than usual. The planet on Tuesday will experience a shorter rotation than the typical 24 hours, though not by much, just 1.34 milliseconds less than usual. And that means that, well, days are speeding up. So if you think time is moving faster, ladies and gentlemen, you are correct. Now, Earth's most dangerous glacier is gaining ice. And guess what? Scientists are baffled. Yeah, they can't explain it. Well, I can. They are all, they are all charlatans because they're living in a global warming world. This image we just looked at right here, where all these glaciers are coming together, showcases the merging of the Lolofon Glacier, the Taram Ser Glacier, and the Siachen Glacier, situated in the Karakoram Mountains, which straddle the borders of India, Pakistan, China, and Afghanistan. These glaciers are part of the Karakoram Anomaly. This anomaly has baffled scientists for years. While glaciers around the world are shrinking, according to headlines, which may be fabricated, these glaciers in the Karakoram Range are expanding, a phenomenon still not fully understood. Well, let me break it to you. In order to expand glaciers, you need more snow and ice. Yeah. Those are the ingredients for glaciers. So apparently, there has been an increase in snow and ice in the Karakoram. And scientists are baffled because they are stuck in their anthropogenic global warming paradigm, which will be coming to an end quite soon. A large ancient Hawaiian petroglyph panel has been uncovered by waves on Oahu. And if you take a quick look at what this is on this slab of rock, it looks like, well, it looks like Squatterman, only the top arms are shifted downward. What's going on here? Well, certainly what we know is that this plasma instability in the sky was seen worldwide in antiquity, and it was recorded in rock. It was that significant and let's take a look at this. Let's open up this image. Wow, that's like reverse squatter man. Archaeologists found the lost book of the dead buried in an Egyptian cemetery. Now, we know about the lost book of the dead because we found it before, but this discovery is amazing. Egyptian archaeologists located a lost 3,500-year-old cemetery containing mummies and statues, among other discoveries they actually found an additional Book of the Dead, papyrus scrolls measuring 43 feet long, a rare surviving copy of the traditional burial item. The team behind the find was mum on the details of the textual discovery. Uh, because, well, someone will come and steal it from you. It's worth millions of dollars. It's absolutely... The value is insane. Just like silver through the roof, 14-year highs, it's now at $39.11 an ounce, and it's headed to 50 bucks. What are you waiting for? Please come over to Gold Co., the industry leader in precious metal IRAs and direct purchases of gold and silver. Please transfer your 401ks that are in fiat currency in the stock market to precious metals. You'll thank me in the future while your retirement savings swell over the next three to five years. If you want to double and triple your life savings, trust Gold Co. Re request your free 2025 gold and silver kit now. There are no penalties from going to stocks to silver. That's the beauty of it. Rated A-plus by the Better Business Bureau. Rated triple A by Business Consumer Alliance. There are no risks. Go get it. It only makes sense. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up. Share this video with like-minded people or even anthropogenic global warming cultists just to blow their mind. 
Hit the thumbs up, subscribe. We're trying to get to 100,000 and we need your help. We're a shadow band, which means YouTube doesn't share this with anyone, which is why we need you to share it. We love you all. Be safe. And that is a boom. Mm -hmm.